Hi everyone, it's Chloe here, and I hope you're having a great day. In my last video, I talked about some great active exercises you can do to make getting over the intermediate plateau a little bit easier. And it's easier because the exercises take a lot of effort. I've been struggling with learning foreign languages, and I've listened to a lot of other language learners who seem to have the same problems as me. Because of this, I've been working hard on trying new approaches to see some real progress. On a two-page cheat sheet I have available on my website, I summarize what I've found helpful so far. Today I want to talk to you about why I think repetition of the same materials and exercises have been working for me. I hope this change in mindset will help you too. Before I get into that, I want to talk about who this is not for and then maybe who this will benefit the most. What I've been developing isn't for everyone and that's okay. If you are one of the people I talk about um, next, this approach may not be a great fit for you. Uh, one, people who need to rely on a book, app, or website to tell them exactly what to learn and what to do. The exercises I talk about will require some resourcefulness, and you will have to choose your own adventure according to your goals, strengths, and weaknesses. Number two, people who can only tolerate tried and true methods. While what I'm going to talk about is nothing completely new, as far as I can tell, the way I think about how to learn a foreign language is a bit novel. Generally speaking, my approach to solving any problem is to create a path leading outside of your comfort zone. And I know a lot of people are not comfortable doing that. Three, people who are determined to uh, quote unquote, become fluent in a language in a short time period, like 12 days or 12 weeks. My approach is slow because for me, my brain needs time to understand the nuances of a language. And then my schedule just can't tolerate studying for 18 hours a day. If you have the ability to learn an entire language quickly, uh, well, you can click on basically any other language learning video on YouTube and you'll hear exactly that. Uh, number four, people who aren't serious about speaking a new language well. My approach is for ambitious people who want to speak a new language concisely and intelligently. Of course, my tips can work if you need to learn a few phrases for a once in a lifetime trip, but I really did create these exercises for people on the track to achieve real spontaneous fluency. Number five, people who get bored easily. Technically, I'm one of these people, but I am okay with repeating the same things uh, for an entire week. I just try to change my primary focus every month. Uh, like listening comprehension one month and then self-correction ability the next month. But if you absolutely cannot stand repeating the same input materials, you might not be able to stick with my method. Lastly, if you are only interested in doing passive exercises like listening to podcasts and watching TV, uh, then this isn't for you. I want you to commit to a lot of work, like a lot of reading, writing, and speaking, even if it's just five minutes a day during a, busy, a very busy week. Uh, and so who was this method created for? Briefly, I created this approach for me. And I have a similar story to so many other people. I learned uh, Spanish and French in high school and college. I spent countless hours studying for tests, but in the end I could barely string together a, a coherent sentence and I couldn't understand someone when they spoke to me. Even when I restarted learning as an adult, I would just forget everything as soon as I moved on to the next lesson. It was like nothing stuck inside my brain. Luckily, I am a resourceful person who can't stand to be beaten by a problem. So I started doing more research and putting different ideas into practice. So who might be able to benefit from my ideas? 
first, a busy adult with limited time and a short attention span, just like me. The process revolves around the concept of autopilot. We repeat the same or similar materials and exercises every day, so you don't have to think about it when your week inevitably gets busy. And I hope the repetition process moves the input that you learn closer to your brain's autopilot output. Number two, a person who is still struggling despite following the, vi the advice found online. Uh, I just cannot follow the advice from these polyglot YouTubers. Um, and I think there's a lot of people like me. Uh, I think that is just too much. And for me, it doesn't fit with my goals and lifestyle. I don't want to speak 10 languages for the sake of speaking 10 languages. I want to speak French because I like France and I want to connect with the crazy ass people who live over there. I want to speak Spanish because I like Latin America and I want to have deep conversations with the people who live in the Spanish speaking countries there. Number three. Someone who doesn't want to spend too much money. Most of the tips I offer are pretty low cost. You can use what's available on YouTube. You can buy a few books that interest you. You can buy a nice notebook and pens in several colors and so on. I usually have three different colors on rotation along with my journal. And of course, a mechanical pencil and a dependable eraser. Number four, someone who wants to speak a language well, uh, like really well. I was talking to one of my guinea pigs who was learning English, and he said the last thing he wants is to sound ignorant. He and most other English learners I've interviewed are looking to learn for business purposes, as in they want to be able to land clients and investors. So that's pretty serious business. That being said, the program I'm testing on him and some others are, is still under construction. So you'll have to check back on my channel or my website when I finish that. We're in June 2023 now, and I hope to get the Spanish version of this intensive method out in a few weeks and English by the end of the year. Lastly, um, this, this program may be for a person with patience. I mentioned before that this is a slow process. A slow process with, I hope, uh, the occasional surprise break, breakthrough every few weeks. Related to this, you have to have realistic expectations. You grew up fully immersed in your native language, and yet you still had to take classes in it in your youth to improve your comprehension. In a new language, jumping to a new level in a year is ambitious, but doable if you really and truly can dedicate several hours every day to practice. But if you're like me, uh, this time commitment is pretty tough. Uh, on a side note about realistic expectations, uh, understand that we all don't have the same abilities for learning languages and that's okay. All of our behaviors usually fall into some sort of bell curve distribution. These polyglot YouTubers who can learn languages quickly might fall into this long tail here, just like Mariah Carey and Stevie Wonder are head and shoulders above the rest of the population in terms of songwriting and singing. Or maybe they're just in a completely different set of people um, than the group that I'm in, and that's okay. It doesn't mean I can't learn a new language well, it just means that uh, it will take me more time and effort. When it comes to solving a problem, I'm pretty tenacious, but I always try to look for the easiest way to get the best result. I've learned a lot in many different subjects over the years, so I was able to cobble together an approach based on great ideas from other places. My main inspirations are, one, blues clues, two, going to the gym, Three, what I know about the brain. The children's show, Blue's Clues, showed the same episode every day for a week. When I heard about this technique however many years ago, I thought that it was pretty interesting in terms of retention 
and comprehension. And so my brain filed that tidbit away for future use. Uh, taking three minutes to choose uh, one set of materials uh, once a week is great for me because I'm a busy adult with a short attention span. So I need to put my weekly tasks on autopilot. Otherwise, they won't get done. If I can automate a routine, then I can stick with it. And I think there are other people who are like me. I would love to hear from anyone who has ADHD. Is this the sort of method that you need in your life? My second inspiration is the gym. I'm smart enough to know that I can't just walk into a gym, do one squat, leave, and then wake up with the perfect butt the next day. Instead, I have to provide the fuel and the weight and the, and the repetitions and the variations needed for my body to increase muscle mass. Lastly, what I specifically say on the cheat sheet is that my target is to train my brain's pattern recognition system. I don't know how to do my brain's job as well as it can do its job. So I decided to humble myself and just work on sharpening it as if it were an ax or a katana. It already knows how to form patterns and how to extrapolate from incomplete information. I just need to spend the time sharpening it uh, and not feeding it mindless input. I think the process I've seen so far in foreign language learning videos on YouTube is based on memorization, cursory introductions to concepts, or spending several hours a day doing all kinds of random shit, which, you know, doesn't work for me. My theory is that I need my brain to rewire itself in order to speak a new language well. I need to do everything I can to help that process along, and that requires a lot of effort and repetition. I want my brain to focus on understanding patterns, because that's what it's great at. All the techniques I, I talked about are, already exist in some parts of foreign language learning or just learning in general. But um, I just added a few tweaks to add efficiency. Have you heard of the term deliberate practice or the book Atomic Habits or its author James Clear? Using uh, this wonderful idea, the purpose of, repeti of repetition in language learning for me is one, to make planning easier, two, to see, to see slight improvements every day, and three, to analyze where I keep making mistakes. I will go more in depth on each of the areas of improvement we need in separate videos in the future. I mentioned in my last video, I use passive exercises like watching Netflix or listening to music to gauge my progress and not as an efficient language learning tool. So thanks for watching. And if you think that you're having the same struggles as me, try out approaching your language journey with a new mindset and add the exercises that are on my cheat sheet to your routine. I wish you the best of luck and I look forward to sharing more tips and tools I think will help you as much as they've helped me.